This week I am in Palm Springs, California, and I have the new 2024 Lincoln Nautilus behind me. And yeah, this is this is this is new. This is this is really cool. There's a lot of interesting technology and some cool lighting things going on. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna do a walk around of this car and I'm going to uh, explore some of those interesting things. We're gonna take a very, very detailed look at that 48 inch screen inside and I'm gonna give you some driving impressions and then we will, uh, yeah, talk about whether or not that screen is distracting because I know that is something that you would like to know. So my name is Jill Simonella with Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk and let's take a closer look, right? now. All right, so we will just start with an exterior walk around of the vehicle. And the first thing you're going to notice is the front is significantly changed and redesigned. And you have this light bar that goes all the way across. And then you have the lit uh, emblem there in the front. You have the really attractive grill with the dots. And, you know, the lights are different, the lighting signatures are different. And I mean, the, the profile is going to be generally the same, but they have done a lot more upscale upgraded things to this vehicle so that it is really significantly refreshed and very different. So for example, if you walk up to the door handles, you're gonna notice this isn't actually a door handle. This doesn't um, you know, pop open. There's a little touch pad on the underside of it and you touch it and that's what opens it. So we've seen that on Lexus vehicles. This is a new trend um, that automakers are starting to employ and they just kind of put it into the design of this vehicle with this little loop that comes out and it's kind of an interesting tactic and you can see it on all four doors. When you go around to the rear of the vehicle, you'll notice that the tail lights have also been redesigned you have a light bar that goes all the way across in the back and you know just kind of an interesting little light design going on around the side you have led lights in the front led led lights in the rear and you also have a really nice lighting signature uh, in terms of welcome lighting when you approach the vehicle when it is off and you have your key in hand. So you know what? Maybe before we go inside and look at that 48 inch screen, let's let's just turn the vehicle off and let's let's talk about lights. All right, so currently the vehicle is locked. You can tell by the side mirrors kind of being tucked in that this vehicle is locked. So I'm gonna, this is the key, I'm gonna hit the unlock button. And you see how the lighting signature just kind of spreads out from the center and goes up the side and then comes back to the middle. And it's just a really interesting, nice little welcome sequence that um, just kind of says, hello. And then if you lock it, you know, a similar thing happens and it just kind of powers down. So walking around the vehicle, when you come over to the back, you will see a similar lighting sequence that happens. So right now the vehicle is locked, so we will hit the unlock button. Oh, look at that. The Lincoln badging lights up. That looks really cool. So that's that's the unlock. And then if you hit the lock button, boop, everything kind of shuts off. Oh, look at that. That was really cool. You know what? I need to come a little bit closer and look at how this does. Um, so if you hit the unlock button, you know, it just kind of Lincoln lights up all at once. And then if you hit the lock button, look at this. Okay, that is officially flipping cool. Okay, I have the key in my pocket. Uh, let us walk up and take a look at the interior. And I mean, the first thing you're gonna see is this welcome screen as it just kind of says, hello. And, you know, instead of saying Lincoln here, it says Nautilus. Let me 
just kind of pop this out so you get the full effect. This is a 48 inch screen right here. So, you know, and they say they measure diagonally, but come on, it's like, <laughs> it's 48 inches. But so you have this going on and then to power it up. You get that nice little Lincoln symphonic charm that um, chime that kind of pulls in. And what you're going to notice is this right here is kind of a static spot. So you have your speedo information here. You have your um, okay. It's telling me my seatbelt isn't hooked, and I'm just going to hit the hit this right here. You can see I'm going to hit the OK button. Um, and so that'll go away. But so you have your speedo information right here. Then you have your uh, map right there. That is static. So everything from here all the way through to here is static. And you can see there's even like a little separation on the glass that is separate. So this right here is all information that can be selected or modified. They are calling these like widgets. So right now, this is an 11 inch screen. This is, this is a touch screen and this controls this. So you do see this crystal dial right here, but this is a volume dial. This is not a, um, you know, an actual dial for you to adjust this right here. So it, you need this screen to adjust this and you have seven things that you can put in these three little spaces. So in order to change that, you come right here and you can see these mimic the three spaces that are there. And what happens is, you know, say you want your tire pressure information here. And so then you kind of move that into the spot and then you can see your tire pressure and then um, maybe you want your media information right there. So you can just kind of select and move. So the seven things you have are a clock, you have your tire pressure information, you have your media, fuel economy, this trip, which is, you know, how long and what your fuel economy is like for, you know, once your engine has recycled and then your trip one, trip two, and then your weather. I, I would say that if I were going to be setting this up for me, um, I would probably put the weather like here. I'd move the clock over here, the weather here. Um, and then, I don't know. I mean, I would probably want to know what my fuel economy is. So I guess that is kind of how I would set it up. And then, you know, as you are looking at the screen, primarily you're going to be looking at this right here, but then you have your widgets set up with additional information right there. And then what you can do is, all right, so because I have all of my information right here that I would look at, like I don't, I don't need the map on this screen here. So, you know, let's just switch it so that you've got your music here. So I like the, f and, and if you had your phone um, connected via Bluetooth, you would have wireless Apple CarPlay here. So you could have your CarPlay here and then all of this here. So what's really interesting is in Apple CarPlay, if you were using Apple Maps for directions, the map that would appear right here is your Apple Map. If you were, um, had your phone connected via uh, Android Auto, the map that would appear here is going to be um, the um, Google Maps. And then because this is an Android operated system, just inherently the map that appears here is a Google Map. So kind of working your way through some of these screens, you can see this little icon here is going to give you vehicle information, um, settings, valet mode, your digital scent, ambient lighting, which you do have some options there. Um, I'm going to turn on the blue. Uh, so you, you have some options for the ambient lighting and I'm thankful that it's kind of cloudy right now because you can actually see the ambient lighting. But what happens is it'll show up in the footwells in addition to on this space right here. And I know somebody had asked me if it would show up in your cup holders and I, I'm going to say that's a no. I'm, I'm going to give that a negatory. So it, it, it shows up here, um, in your footwells and here, but it does not show up here. But you have some color options of things that you can change in terms of what you want. And um, so that is going to be in your settings here. 
And then you've got your drive modes through here and you can kind of scroll through some different options. And I like the graphics. I think the graphics look really cool. We, I will be honest with you, drove mostly in Excite and um, I'll get into some driving impressions, but I liked the Excite mode. It kind of increased your throttle response and um, you know tightened up your steering. Everything just felt a little bit more responsive. Um, let's see, we'll, we'll click on this because you do have the 24-way perfect position seat so you can adjust all the bolsters and the lumbar support. You can adjust the cushion here at the bottom and then you do have massaging seat options. And again, all of that is through this icon right here. And if you hit the home button, again, this is what your home button looks like. And then if you want some widgets or, um, you know, if you want to change some set, not settings, but if you want to change um, some of the things that you're going to appear um, on here, you again, you've got your Play Store maps, your uh, Google Assistant, AM, FM radio, and um, things like that. So that's going to be in here. And then, as I said, this is to change that. So the next thing I want to do is I'm just going to take a quick look at the interior. And this is just an attractive interior. This is the chalet theme. So this is going to be a black label model uh, with the white interior. You do have this flat bottom steering wheel because the idea, and this is not set up for my driving position, but the idea is that the steering wheel is down low enough and that you look over the top of the steering wheel to see your speedo and all of that stuff. So I did not find that this blocked my view of anything. And I know a lot of people have asked me if this is distracting and um, yeah, we'll get into that next. So really att attractive elements, features, designs, really nice patterning on the seats and a very spacious rear seat in addition to this lovely panoramic moonroof. Now I am gonna climb into the back seat uh, for a second because there is one thing that I do wanna show you and I actually also wanna talk about this. This is how you open the door on the inside. So coming into the back seat really quick, excuse my backpack, um, I did wanna show you that you do not have rear climate controls. And I specifically asked about that. And Lincoln told me that the clients for this vehicle don't want it. I don't know, what do you think about that? <laughs> do you want rear climate controls? If so, maybe you're not a Lincoln passenger or a Lincoln buyer. I do like the uh, rear heated seats and you do have vents, but you do not have um, the ability to control climate. And I will point out your ambient lighting does kind of carry through into the back seat. So um, what you really wanna know probably is how this drives. So another quick look here and let's get into some driving impressions. As I will point out, this is not the exact vehicle that we have been driving, but I wanted to showcase this vehicle specifically because let me pop this out a little bit, yep. We have the entire family lined up right here. And I know there have been some questions about size proportions in terms of which vehicle is bigger, you know, how it does it compare to, you know, one to the other, you know, specifically with regard to the Corsair and the Nautilus. And as you can see, you have the compact SUV right here, the Corsair, then you have the Nautilus, which is gonna be certainly a little bit taller, a little bit bigger, have a little bit more cargo room. And frankly, it's gonna be a little bit more luxurious than the younger sibling. Now, when you look at the Aviator versus the Nautilus, you've got, you know, a midsize two row versus a midsize three row. And then when you have the Navigator, versus the Aviator. You've got a full-size three-row versus a uh, mid-size three-row. So just a quick look at these three. And you know what, we'll just, we'll go around the side, we'll walk around the back so you can see some of the differences. That way, these vehicles are not currently unlocked. So I can't do the comparison inside back-to-back but this will just give you a quick look 
at some of the differences. And you know, as you walk down the row, you can totally see size differences. This, this is big. But there you go. So just a quick look at the entire Lincoln lineup. All right, now it is time to address the 48 inch elephant in the room and that is going to be these screens right here and whether or not they are distracting. And you know what, spoiler alert, they are not distracting. <laughs> I don't know what to say other than that because the information that you need right here, the static information, we've already gone over these screens, the static information is right below your eye level. And so like I'm looking up, how fast am I going? I just kind of dip down and I can see it out of kind of the corner of my eye, bottom of my eye. And you know, the map information is right there. That is way better than having it right here. And I definitely appreciate that. And then the information that you're gonna have on that side of your screen is static. So it doesn't change. It's not like you're gonna be looking at it and you're gonna be like, oh, squirrel! There's no squirrel over here. This information doesn't change. If you wanna see what time it is, you just kind of look up and look over, oh, it's 447. So I just really appreciate the fact that, you know, none of the information that you have over there is going to be distracting. And if you want to, I think you can even turn all of that off. So uh, I, I, I don't know. You, um, yeah, so if you, oh, yep. So if you, if you can use your fingers. So if you hit the calm screen, all of that shuts off and wah, no distraction. The only thing you can see is your speed limit. So um, thank you to my Vanna White. <laughs> Uh, but, but no, I, and so, I mean, you can, you can turn it on when you want it on, you can turn it off when you want it off. And I just, I really appreciate the fact that you can have as much or as little information as you want in this space. And so I, I just, yeah, I'm going to start where I ended. I do not find this distracting at all. It's below my peripheral vision. Well, not my peripheral vision. It is below like what I'm looking at. And so I have really good visibility out of the front. And then, um, you know, this is just kind of a secondary thing that I can just dip into and look back up. Not distracting. All right, moving on to some brief driving impressions. Overall, I really like this new Nautilus. It's quiet, it's smooth. I've driven both the gas and the hybrid models. And I will say to me, the gas model felt a little bit peppier, but I know that the hybrid version is supposed to be bred more for power. But um, they're both really nice, really quiet, very smooth, nice, seamless, quiet acceleration. And, you know, I will say the one thing that I love about Lincoln is it's the kind of vehicle that as soon as you sit in the driver's seat, whether it's 24 perfect way positioning seats or not, you just feel the sense of calm because the cabin itself is so quiet and it just... It's just very relaxing. So this is a very pleasant experience. I like how it drives. I like my driver's position. I feel really good as a fifth percentile female sitting in the driver's seat. As we just discovered, the screens are not distracting. They do not obstruct my view. And overall, you know, this is just very, very comfortable. There are two things that I don't like about this new Nautilus. And one is the fact that you have a little button to push for your drive modes, but then you have to toggle into the um, screen to actually change your drive mode. So, you know, you're used to having a button that you can kind of toggle, toggle, toggle through. And then, um, you know, this isn't that. So you press the button, it pops up the your drive modes on your display screen and then you have to deal with it from there so I mean muscle memory I'm sure owners would get used to it and it would be fine but for somebody who is new to the car it's a little bit of a weird experience and it's not intuitive it's not intuitive so hey Lincoln maybe maybe think about that for an update and just make that a toggle make it a toggle make it easy I don't want to have to go two places to deal with that the other thing that I thought that was a little bit off in this vehicle is this 11 inch display screen, the angle of it and the shininess of it. Because then 
when you're trying to adjust something on the screen and if the sun is shining, yeah, it's hard and you can't see it and you can adjust the brightness a little bit on the display of the screen, but still it's a little bit distracting depending on what you have on there and what you're trying to do, like change your drive modes, you can't see it because it's too shiny. So I don't know how, if you can change the angle. I don't know if you can put a film over that. I don't, I don't know what you want to do, but that is the other thing that I found to be, that was the other thing that I found to be a little bit off about um, the, the, the Nautilus. Two things, that's, that's really it. Usually I try to come up with five things that I don't like about the vehicle and I could only come up with two. I need a toggle switch and I need a less shiny screen. That's it. All right, that is what I have for you today on the 2024 Lincoln Nautilus. Thank you for coming along with me on this drive and uh, yeah, I will see you down the road.